Hi, this is Jerry Zhang from Hong Kong, and this is In the Field with Jamie Hall. Hello and welcome again to another episode of In The Field. In this episode, I was lucky enough to travel to Bali and Indonesia and meet up with and be guided by Jerry, a macro photographer for originally from Hong Kong who had been in Bali for the last couple of years. The first place he went to was Munduk, in a beautifully green, lush and mountainous part of Bali and did most of our filming in Cinnamon, a quiet, calm and stunning part of Bali that wasn't very touristy and surrounded by working rice fields. Jerry's images are often a little bit different than some of the other photographers I've spoken to, concentrating less on close-up, high magnification detail and looking more at wider compositional shots taking advantage of natural light, something that's a bit more akin to wildlife photography competitions, although he does do stacks and diffuse shots as well. Jerry is young, creative and super knowledgeable and we had a great time geeking out over bugs over the course of a couple of days. It was always my hope to travel with these episodes and look at wildlife and photographers all over the world. So I'm super happy to have my first international episode under the belt and hopefully it is the start of more to come. But for now, I hope you enjoy this episode. this episode this time I am joined by Jerry uh, as always uh, talking about gear first and Jerry has without doubt the most ghetto setup <laughs> of anyone that I've uh, had a chat with so far so Jerry talk us about what you've got yeah today. so I've got a simple uh, D500 Nikon yeah and uh, and a 105 millimeter uh, 2.8 with uh, vibration reduction yeah and also uh, uh, SB500 flash. That's pretty old flash, right? Yeah, pretty old flash, I think. And, uh, you know, uh, one of my friends gave me uh, this uh, diffuser, actually, in Bali. So I didn't have a diffuser before. But uh, the way I attached this diffuser, I have to just wrap duct tape absolutely all around it. So, so yeah. literally sellotape on this. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's a bit battered. Yeah, it's a pretty bit battered. Marked. Uh, I had to glue uh, this part, super glue that part. Uh, so, you know. Um, I did lend Jerry uh, the Cygnus Tech, which is again I'm using um, on our last sort of time together. But I thought better just to give uh, you get him to use what he always uses, so we can see some of the results that he's getting with this. But again, pretty basic set setup, uh, cropped frame, nothing too flashy. Yep, yep. And uh, when we, I met Jerry last week, um, we went out and you had 64 frames on his card. I need to give you a card actually, don't I? How, uh, how's your card have, now? Uh, 49 frames right 49 now. 49 <laughs> frames. Um, so again, just showing that, that you know, I'm, I'm very lucky and have invested in having, you know, redundancy and extra storage and what have you. And, and you're, you like take a shot and delete shots as you go. So uh, that you yeah, can sometimes, keep shots, yeah. Right? I just really, I'm really choosy about my shots. I just kind of snoop around. And I don't take a lot of shots. But you're happy with 49? Yeah, I'm happy with 49. Okay, well, I'm going to give you a card anyway so we can <laughs> take more than 49 shots today. The first time in this series, I am on my new gear, which is the Olympus EM1X. I uh, have the Rainux as always and my Cygnus Tech Diffuser with the 60mm lens. Um, it's been working absolutely amazing for me. There's quite a few differences between this and my last setup, which was the 5D. So I'll talk about some of the advantages and maybe some of the disadvantages of that as well. Apart from that, you ready to shoot some shots? Yeah, yeah, sure. Let's All right, go. let's go for it. And 
that's the, uh, uh, that's the whatever you call it. Um, I forgot what you call it, but they uh, basically stay on the web and then they leech off on the spider. The other ones, the ones behind them. I think it's and got. I think there's a male as well. I think it's got some prey again. In there, it's got something. Yes, yeah, so there's two, got two males here as well. Now one of them is the male, and one of them aren't. No. Yeah. Uh, the one with the big abdomen oh, is not the male. This one isn't, hey. Yeah. So that one basically just leeches off the the big one. We can't remember what this one's called. Uh, it's Nephilia. Uh, and this starts with a P, I don't know how to pronounce it, but... Uh, is this something you try and get an, a shot of, something like this in this position? Uh, yeah, something like that, but I don't think I'll get a good shot. I'll just try something out with the... Uh, I want the uh, big one out of focus, and I'm just going to shoot the male. Uh, and possibly I can get an interesting shot of this. So this plays a bit more into Jerry's hand, because... Um, Jerry's shots tend to be a bit more wider and a bit more compositional, probably partly because the fact he goes out with 50 frames. Um, <laughs> but for me, like I, I kind of naturally go more towards uh, a stack shot and detailed. And in this place, it's super hard to get there. We've got the web on the front, so it's going to be really difficult to get anything like that. But Jerry is probably going to whip out some sort of compositional masterpiece. So we're in a place called uh, Cinnamon, super beautiful area, lots of rice fields and came for a recce yesterday and, and found this area um, nice and secluded. I don't know much about it but I can only assume that this is sort of guiding the water towards the rice fields which is just absolutely stunning and when you get here you get some really crazy nice views. Tiny looking grass up there. Huh? So when did you start getting into photography or, or macro photography, Jerry? Uh, I got into it about uh, I think four, four and a half or four years ago. And uh, it was actually because I saw a Facebook post of a uh, ladybug covered in dew uh, with some uh, flower reflections behind oh, yeah? it. Yeah. And then uh, yeah, basically begged my mom to get a camera for me. Uh, and I got the uh, same thing, Nikon uh, yeah. with a 40mm uh, 2.8 uh, macro lens. But then I actually lost it when I was traveling in China in Guangzhou, the train station. Someone just snatched it from me. I don't know who it was. Well, in right in front of your face? Though. Not, not oh, right, right in front of my face. I think I put it on the ground and someone just took it. Right. Yeah, so that was not good. But my aunt is really nice, so she got me a new gear, which is basically that. Oh, nice. So yeah, I got got back to uh, photography after a year of losing my gear. And you're pretty self-taught, right? Yep. Uh -huh. um, so you do quite a bit of like natural light stuff as well? Uh, yeah, I started with natural light, I think. Okay. Yeah, I started with natural light, no flash, no nothing. And uh, I think a lot of times uh, I find natural light pretty attractive. Uh, if you're doing more of the compositional stuff, I mean, if you're doing portraits, then you gotta use flash, right? Flash and diffuser. But uh, I just find myself uh, taking my flash off sometimes and uh, going for a more wider shot. There's um, 
a spider here with a pretty cool pattern on its web. It's in there. Ah, uh, that's the, uh, we call it, I think, uh, stablementium. Yeah. I think so. Oh, there's another it one says here. It says it reflects well. UV light or something uh, to attract more uh, insects. Oh, yeah? Yeah, some say it, it's like a, a deterrent for uh, birds and also it's just like a sunshade. Okay. But it's not very clear yet. So. And where do you, where do you find this sort of stuff out? Uh, so I actually used to be a really big spider lover. I mean, I still am, but I'm just not so res researching it so much right now. But I used to read loads of books about spiders, spider biology, whatever. I used to read loads. Oh, you of actually read books, not just online? Yeah, no. So I found a um, surprisingly few amount of spiders here initially. Obviously, spiders are a big subject for me generally. Uh, just they're diverse and they're kind of everywhere, so I really love them. So I was certainly looking to try and find quite a few spiders here, but was finding mostly things like leaf hoppers and other insects. Uh, but luckily, towards the end of this holiday, started to find some really interesting spiders, including the one that we found, the uh, iridescent one, when we were on our last walk. That was really beautiful. But it's good to know there's some diversity here too. Wee! Look at this. Got a type of long jawed orb weaver here. Oh, cool. Looking pretty cool. I do love these guys. A bit windy here, so trying yeah. to get anything is a bit hard. These guys are very cool. They have a crazy, like, big, big set of jaws on mm. there. Look really good in the shot if you can get nice and close, but it is very, they're pretty small. And on a little leaf like this, like I'm just kind of holding on to this leaf now, but even doing this, like it's moving around a lot. Oh, wait. Oh, they're ants. Ants feeding on, by feeding on the nectar, maybe? Excretions? Oh, wow. That's pretty cool. There is a shitload here. I'll just see if I can get you to see these. I think the ants will come get you. Don't want that to fall on my face. Yeah, all right. <laughs> That's kind of could be terrible. Some quick fire questions for you, then, Jerry. Mm -hmm. um, what are your favourite subjects to shoot? Well, I think my favourite subject probably has to be uh, dragonflies or damselflies. So, I really like uh, how they work with natural light. Uh, I just love the uh, wing aspect of it because it's uh, transparent, so light can pierce through there and makes for a lot of uh, creative compositions that way. Yeah, you definitely got some really good compositions. And any favourite shots, like a favourite shot that comes to mind? Uh, I don't know if you have seen the uh, three pins on my Instagram page. Uh, one of them is the uh, golden orb weaver with the uh, Argiotis spider, which uh, pretty much oh, is a parasitic one. Is that the fo in focus one and the back and the out yeah, of focus yeah. one? Yeah, that's the really big nice. Out of focus one, yeah. And the other one is a uh, fruit bat oh, on yeah. top of the Balinese carving in my home state, I just flew in and just kind of perched on there. Bats so, are awesome subjects, so yeah. I really like them. The third one was the uh, uh, yellow-legged hornets uh, and the uh, Asian honeybees. Uh, that one was captured in flight and then, uh, yeah, that was pretty cool because the uh, hornets were actually preying on the honeybees. They were just kind of like raiding them in air, staying uh, near the nest and when the bees come back, they just snatch them and they're gone. So Crazy. That was a pretty cool one. I have to see that shot. I don't think I recognise the uh, the um, thing from the description. Okay, uh, anything that you're like de dead keen to see? Like, have you got like a massive wish list? Oh man! Some big species yeah, that yeah, you'd love yeah. to shoot. I've actually just talked to uh, Cygnus Tech about mm -hmm. it. He said there were like thirty uh, um, ogre face spiders in his oh, house, yeah, just yeah, yeah. around there. So neck that was neck definitely, definitely a uh, top of my wish list. Uh, I really want to capture it just in action uh, mm. with the web that it weaves in. That's a massive that. one for yeah. me, actually. I've seen um, I've seen just one netcaster, but it wasn't the yoga face one. Uh -huh. So I'm really keen to see some of those yeah. as well. 
Okay, last question. Have you got any um, photographers on Instagram or elsewhere that are like big inspirations to you that you really like? Like. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, just let me think for a second. Uh, there's one that uh, he's called uh, uh, Ripan Biswas. Okay. I don't know if you know him. No, I don't but follow him. He he's a winner in the uh, wildlife photography competition oh, uh, in the okay. UK. There's a lot of like uh, really young photographers now that's really talented, like uh, Nature Magnified. Yeah, yeah, legends. Uh, Nature Magnified, Macro GP, and I really like a um, oh man. His name is so hard to pronounce, but it's <laughs> it's, a, it's like a Greek name. It's a P Y O. Oh yeah, yeah, he, was, he does yeah. a lot of interesting compositions. Nice. And of course, uh, you have a shot that I really like as well. It's the uh, just a juicy mushroom. <laughs> that one, that one's really cool. I really like that one. Nice, nice one. One of the things that's becoming more and more popular in macro photography is plamps and staging. So I got this a little while ago, it's a pretty solid bit of metal, nice and heavy. Uh, normally I'm going to be laying on the ground or it's sort of in the field as it were, but we just happened to be next to where we're staying and saw a really cool subject. So I thought we'd get out here, nice bit more comfortable. So this comes with some nice strong arms, metal bottoms. Jerry's got one he's prepared earlier. So I've already got a little weevil that we found on this leaf. And I can take some photos of them over the years, or what I really like is some nice natural background. So I've gone and found some leaves with some really cool purples. And then I can stick um, this one on here and set up a little background. Start shooting as it is there. And it makes this nice and easy. I can manoeuvre these however I want to get sort of a bit more blur on these and get some nice colour for some compositions. Again, it's not something that I'm doing all the time, but uh, sometimes you have a pretty chill subject. Weevils can be quite good to do, or um, other spiders. Just makes it a bit more creative, um, but nice and fun to do. Have you done much of this before? Uh, I've actually never done any of this before. No? No. I don't, uh, well, I don't have any clamps or anything like that, so. I used to take a, well, I don't do stuff like this. Basically, I take my, uh, you know, those uh, cloth hanger, no, not cloth hangers, those cloth pins or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, used to just like get the grass out of the way. I just kind of clamp oh, them yeah. together, yeah, yeah. but not anything like this. So, yeah. Go for it, take some shots. Bali is home to some incredible sights and some really amazing waterfalls. Uh, we just drove halfway across town to go to one. Unfortunately, there was some chainsawing going on. Uh, we then drove to a really nice bridge, which had, uh, I don't know, a wedding or a million people in a ceremony going past. So we've come back to pretty much where we started. But we did manage to get to a waterfall last week. And we did a bit of drone footage there. We didn't do any, um, any other camera work. But you uh, were doing some pretty interesting stuff with some of the fishing spiders. Just wanted oh, yeah, to talk yeah. through some of that. Yeah, so I was, uh, I was basically uh, doing a rear curtain flash on the spiders. I was uh, getting my tripod in the water and then uh, pointing my camera down at the fishing spider. And uh, I had, uh, had a big leaf uh, from just randomly somewhere, picked a big leaf, put it on my camera so I can block out you know, the reflections in the water. Um, so for people that don't know, explain how the rear curtain flash works. Oh yeah. So that's basically the flash fires at the uh, end of your shot. So basically that means if you're doing a long exposure of maybe, let's say a dancer, you would get slow shutter speed part of the dancer, like of it moving Getting and all the motion blur, blur and all yeah. that. And then at the end you get like more of a clear image of the dancer in, in focus. So what was your shutter speed for that shot that you did there? Um, I think I was doing around uh, one second or 
one to two, maybe, I think. One over two seconds. And what you're trying to do is get the sort of motion blur of the dashing spider and then the flash of the freeze at the end. Yeah, yeah. I was trying to get the uh, spider to go across the water because uh, when the spider goes across the water, uh, its little legs, it's got uh, reflection from the water. So I was trying to get that when it goes across the water, it probably looks like uh, like an ice ski effect mm. or something like that. So it's really, um, really interesting because there's, there's not many people, certainly in macro or in the community that I know, that are sort of pushing that side of the composition and the, the technical side. And it's really awesome to see. And having met Jerry last week and he turns up with this, you know, raggedy gear and no shots. And then he's, <laughs> you know, taping on bamboo leaves and trying to do rear curtain flashes. Uh, it, it just helps to give so much more appreciation for, for some of his work. Um, but there are some really stunning views there. We've we've seen some stunning views here, and uh, it's it's been an amazing place to shoot and to film. Uh, not without its challenges, lots of uh, motorbikes and problems with the sun. We're in the middle of this massive valley, <laughs> and the sun has just been terrible all day. But uh, we've managed to just about get away with it. I think we've got some pretty good shots, don't yep. you think, Jerry? Got some pretty good ones here. <clears throat> it was good driving around. Okay, cool. I think that'll do for the day. Um, thanks so much for doing this, yep. Jerry. Much appreciated. Hope nice meeting you, man. Thank you. Hope it gets you in Australia. Uh, do check out Jerry's work on Instagram, Wade in the Wild, some really great stuff there. Hope thanks. you've enjoyed our day and uh, look forward to seeing you next time. Cheers. Cheers. One of the things that's becoming a bit more uh, popular in Mexico. <laughs> One of the things that's becoming uh, a bit more per <laughs> sake. <laughs> It's going to be the uh, behind the scenes. <laughs> oh, shit. Nope, not doing that again. <laughs>All right, I think that will do for the day. Yep. Thank you very much, Jerry. That was awesome. Thanks, man. And let's do that again. That will take a little bit. <laughs> okay, we'll do, we'll do that. Do that. Yeah, do that. Do that, do that yep. <clears throat> All right, I think that will do for the day. Uh, thanks so much, yep. very much. For thanks, man. Hopefully nice meeting see you, you in Australia. Um, no, f I've forgotten what I was going to say because <laughs> I was just laughing. <laughs> All right, I think that will do for the day. Um, thanks so much, Jerry. Much yep. appreciated. Thanks for meeting you, man. Us, I'll seriously now. <laughs> Done about five takes on this. Um, I hope we'll catch you in Australia. Yep. And do check out uh, Jerry's fucking <laughs> bull. <laughs> oh, oh, man, that's that funny. funny. That, that'll be a great one. Now the sun's out. <laughs> oh, that's, that's funny. I'm that's... glad you're having fun, Jerry. <laughs>